So let's talk about hardy apples that are hardy, but that are also easy to grow. One of the things that I think frustrates most people when they start to grow apples, no matter where you are, uh, is disease and insects. And so uh, if you are planning to grow without uh, the heavier duty pesticides and so forth, then the first thing I would look for, other than hardiness, is uh, disease resistance. And diseases are probably the most difficult to deal with because they're airborne uh, spores that land. And the, the most famous, of course, is apple scab. So you take a, a cultivar like um, Macintosh, very, very susceptible. Now you can take a cultivar such as Novamac, which is a cross between Macintosh and a scab resistant seedling that resulted in, a, in an apple that's essentially the same flavor as Macintosh, the same texture, very, very similar. You can grow that with ease because it does not get scab, it does not get mildew, it does not get rust, it does not get fire blight. So you'll still have to deal with some insects, but even so, I find that Novamac, for instance, is more resistant uh, to things like coddling moth and apple maggot than, than many. Uh, another one that I would point out is Liberty, which again, very, very disease resistant. Uh, so it, that makes growing them so much easier than if you have a scabby apple. So we have Liberty, we have Novamac. Is there a third uh, one that you find easier to grow, disease resistant, that you really like? Frostbite, which is uh, all around the most interesting apple I've ever run into. When I first bit into a frostbite, it was as if all of the essences of apple had been distilled, almost like a a, you know, a wine compared to a brandy, right? It, and it has this background of sugarcane sweetness. It's very uh, crunchy, juicy. It has a sort of nuttiness to it. It's a very complex apple. And interesting enough, when they did a DNA test of Honeycrisp, the big uh, superstar right now, it turns out that it is the grandparent of Honeycrisp. And when you taste it, you can feel some of that crackling crispness of it. Um, but the flavor is like nothing else. Do you know who developed it? Or was it a seedling apple that somebody found? It came out of the University of Minnesota uh, fruit, fruit Breeding Program. I think it was Dr. Alderman who chose the seedling. They used it for breeding purposes, but it was never released because it was small. It was not what we call pretty, but it's interesting that there were enough people like me who bought it as Minnesota 447 who fell in love with it. And they kept badgering the university until finally they had a contest to name it. And they had 7,000 people write in with names. And four of them, I think it was four or seven of them chose Frostbite, which I think is an absolutely perfect name. And so it's it just so great that it was not allowed to slip into horticultural oblivion because it is such an amazing apple.